today I'll be showing you how to build a simple Twitch kind of like be right back 3D embossed kind of um, animation loader thing really easy so let's just dive right on in so let's dive on right in so what we're gonna do to start off is we're gonna delete the default objects per usual one thing I don't typically do uh, what I want to show you guys at the start here is turn on ambient inclusion, turn on bloom, and screen space reflections. Now what you're going to do here, take the default cube, let's bring it up a little bit. We're just going to smash it a little bit. So press S and then Z. You can just drag it down, smash it. You want to get a little platform kind of going on here. Let's just bring it. You just bring it to the section or height that you like doesn't really matter too much. You press N. What we can do now here is you can type in 8, 8. Depends on how big you want it. I'm going to do 16, 16 actually because I'm not too sure yet on our typeface. So once you have this set up, we're going to go ahead and just bring in our camera first before we bring in the text. So we'll do a vertical split. And hold you down your tilde, you get on the top, press shift A, bring in a camera, move it up a little bit. Let's see what the camera view is. Oops, let's pay attention on our left side. About there is okay for now. Now we're gonna bring in our text now, the fun part. So <coughs> Once you spawn in your text, you can kind of see, okay, because everything is around our origin, we're, we're kind of fine. Go to the text data properties and that right hand corner, turn the alignment to centered. Um, now the fun part that you guys have all been waiting for is, okay, once you have something in there, if you press tab, you can kind of edit. So let's just go ahead and set it to that. Now, the fun part is um, a lot of these default fonts don't look all that appetizing or fun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to find a nice display font from a becoming designer and uh, you won't get in trouble for using it. So let's go ahead and pop out here. I want to show you this site called Behance. Behance is a place to get inspiration and whatnot. It's not a sponsor, but it's probably one of my favorite places to find display fonts used in the wild. Now, once you type in, in the search the search bar, so just bring you right back to the entrance so you know where to go. In the top corner, type in uh, free display font. And the keyword is display font and free. It depends if you want to pay or not. And you can see here we have a lot to choose from. Um, I'm personally going to pick... So after you download it, <clears throat> we're going to go on over and I have it in my downloads folder. You can kind of see we have our text now. So let's just mess with the materials. Let's not pay too much attention to our camera. Let's just get it centered in the frame. So let's type in the right. Okay, once you type in what you want, go over to geometry and pay attention to this. When you do extrude, bring it out a bit. You want to make sure you're coming out of, out of it all. So then you can make it a little bit smaller. One thing you can also do is if you're noticing when you scale it, it doesn't really scale to where you need it to do. Just take your own left hand section, move the cursor essentially right in the center of it all. Then when you have the object selected, go to object, origin of 3D cursor, 
And what that will do is give you a nice little centered thing. So when you scale it, it goes right there. So you need to be right back. And then let's add a little bit of some fun text on, this, on the bottom. You can put I don't know, let's put like a streamer name, like multi mica. Keep in mind, like this is kind of like graphic design too, so you can have a little more fun with this, this stuff. Let's just put number, some numbers in there, you know? Don't do it on the z-axis. Okay. So now we have a bit of a competition here. Let's bring it oops, down a little bit. You want it to be kind of centered. And if you're wondering, like, okay, how can I tell if I'm centered still? Go ahead and click your camera in the collections. Put a viewport display, composition guides, third, and centered. And you can kind of see now, okay. I see what's centered and I see what's not. And from here, if you have, make sure you double check that your text is protruding out a little bit. Um, if you feel like, oh, it looks like my text is, yeah, it's protruding. If you feel like you need it to protrude some more, you need to make it bigger, don't be afraid to go over to your geometry and pump that up a bit. Like, let's go ahead and pump this up a bit by like 11. 0.1. All right. So now it's time for the fun part. It's time for materials. So let's go ahead and let's crank open one of our shader editors. So I like to split. Um, actually, you know what we can do, my friend? We can just change this whole thing to shader editor for right now. So. Do material preview just so we can kind of see the colors and whatnot. So first things first, we're gonna select our plane, and I'm gonna call it background. I'm gonna go ahead and give it some subsurface, and then I'm gonna add a little metallic. I'm gonna go up on the roughness. I do believe that. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm kind of going to do the same thing with here. I'm going to make a material and call it letters gonna up the subsurface. We want it to look kind of like, like a gummy ish kind of thing. That's what I've been feeling as of lately. I have a bit of jaw pains. And what we're going to do is just go ahead over here, click this, attach it. All right. So we just went ahead and applied our like pretty basic kind of gummy-ish filter. All right. And what we're gonna do now, go back over to the 3D viewport. Gonna make it a little bigger this time. We're gonna jump in and add some lighting here. I wanna go ahead and add an environment light, I want to color it a certain way. So we go over here to your scene world, turn up a bit, switch this to rendered, make sure the color is brighter. We can make it a bit more of a gray, we can make it a bit more of like blue. Let's do something that mm, is a bit, oops, a bit more like that. We're gonna add in some lights here. So we're gonna do the area light, bring it up a bit. You can increase its voltage, but I don't suggest doing that in front of the camera. What I suggest doing, taking a light and go ahead and 
bring it on over to the corner. You're gonna press R X and you're gonna just like move it on over to that direction, then press R Y. Oops. R Z. Move it into the direction. You can kind of like you, if you look closely, you can see our shadow starting to develop down there. Now jumping right back in. One of the tricks we want to do here to have this bit of like an animation is we are going to go ahead and take our area light and we're going to add an object constraint. We're just going to do this right now and do track two, leave that alone. And then we're going to add in an empty you can name that. I'll call it light track. Go your area light. And that target is going to be your light track. Now, what you can see here is when you pull it, if you pull on the X axis, the light's always going to kind of be facing it. Now from here, you can get creative. This is where your creative flexibility happens. You can change the color of the light. If you up the waters, I think you can kind of still get the shadows. It really depends on like, what color you're using. You can see like, it's okay, not perfect. Bring, let's bring down our light here. You can kind of see if you want at this point, you can even keyframe some stuff. Let's go ahead and do that just to make the little subtle animation. So let's do, let's just try this area to clean this up real quick. So what you're paying attention to is your X value for the, for the light. So go ahead and insert a single keyframe. Don't forget this number. What you can do is move it about halfway. You're going to want it to travel kind of loop right about there. It's the keyframe. Let's just go down here, copy the original keyframe, punch it in. And if you look, we potentially have an animation going on here. You really could make it rotate all the way around, but I'm going to save that for another day. So if you click over here, you can see this nice little be right back. And that's pretty much the base tutorial. I'm going to cut out this little bonus part now for anyone that is very, very interested. So. I'm going to call this experimental <laughs> just for right now. Oops. If anyone's interested in making this look a little bit cooler, a little bit crazier, let's pop in here. Our favorite modifier, the lens distortion, bring in a viewer, reroute, bring that, bring it here. I like to add a little bit of jitter. Turn this image real quick. The jitter makes it kind of cool. Yeah, a little bit of dispersion. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And you have your little animation going on here. For those uh, curious on how to export it, you jump over to the little printer icon, come all the way down here. Make sure you have an MPEG video. I like MP4s. Uh, high quality is fine. Your output is whatever folder you want to save it in. And from there, you pretty much will click render animation and it will be good to go.